What's up, folks? Welcome back to Nats Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and it's time to talk about more points costs from the new Nephilim points document. Now, for those who don't know and are just joining the series, this document is takes the place of the normal Munitorum field manual that we would normally get with a Warhammer 40,000 chapter-approved release. The Munitorum field manual was the booklet that had all of the points costs for every unit in the game contained within it, and came within a kit of books that would basically tell you how to play that season of GT40K. Instead, this time around, we are getting the points cost document as a PDF available for free online to everyone rather than a book you have to buy. This is super awesome because not only does it reduce the cost of the new chapter approved set for anyone who wants to get it, but also means that you don't have a book that may or may not be superseded by subsequent releases or erratas very shortly after release. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about Chaos. We've talked about Eldari, as well as all of the mixed Xenos sub-factions in the previous two videos in the series, and we're going to be talking about Imperium Faction next, and then moving on to talk about Standard Space Marines. But today, we're talking about Chaos, and this is going to be a bit of a weird one, because uh, I'm, I'm actually just going to go ahead and skip some parts in here. Now, the first thing that we'll notice, first off, if we move to the Chaos Space Marine section of the document, is that a lot of these entries trees and points costs are wildly divergent from what is in the 8th edition version of the Chaos Space Marine Codex. And that is because this is actually the points cost section for the 9th edition Chaos Space Marine Codex, which I believe goes on sale this weekend. So I'm actually just going to skip this entire section. We're not going to be talking about Chaos Space Marines almost at all. You can see most units have increased in points cost. We even have new entries for units like Legionaries who don't currently exist in the game. But we should have full spoilers for this codex within the next week or so. So this section won't be too relevant for us. We can also see uh, there is even a section for world eaters who are going to get, be getting their own codex probably within the very foreseeable future. So they are now included as their own army. And uh, we see corn berserkers increasing five points per model and Karn the betrayer increasing 25 points. Certainly not consistent with their existing data sheets. So we're just going to skip these guys entirely. What I will do, however, is I will talk about the Chaos Space Marine section of the Forge World points values because these data sheets are not changing and these are going to be relevant for basically every Chaos Space Marine sub-faction, including Thousand Suns and Death Guard. So let's go through this real quickly. Now, one thing that we're, we're going to be seeing as kind of a theme, and especially through the release of the new Chaos Space Marine Codex, is a push towards heavier vehicles on the table. So we can see that uh, embodied in points cuts for the Chaos Land Raider Achilles, as well as the Land Raider Proteus. Now, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not these Land Raider data sheets get updates to their stat line, like we're seeing the Chaos Land Raider getting, because we've had the Chaos Land Raider data sheet spoiled for us, and it looks like it's going up to Toughness 9 and getting bonuses to its damage output on its big weapons. Now, that in conjunction with a 30-point discount on the Achilles, and the Proteus would be very cool, and we may start to see Land Raiders sneak back on the table. We also see a lot of the other Chaos Super Heavies getting discounts as well, including the Chaos Cerberus, Falchion, Fellblade, Mastodon, Spartan, Typhon, and the Greater Brass Scorpion. That's going to be 50 points for the Falchion, Fellblade, Mastodon, and Brass Scorpion, as well as 30 points for the Spartan and the Typhon. I almost wonder as well if there is a synergy between the release of the new Horus Heresy edition and these points changes because a lot of these are Horus Heresy uh, era units and I wonder if Games Workshop is maybe scaling up their production of these models in order to fulfill uh, newfound demand for new players of the Horus Heresy system and if they uh, at the same time want to be able to push these to Warhammer 40,000 games as well uh, giving them these much needed buffs would uh, certainly help in doing that. But that is all we're going to be talking about for standard Chaos Space Marines today, because uh, the rest of this section is going to be taken up by the other Chaos sub-factions. Now, I'll rip a couple band-aids off real quick here. Chaos Knights, no changes whatsoever. I think, uh, as is to be expected, the Chaos Knight Codex is very new, uh, came out only within the last couple of weeks, 
and uh, we haven't really seen it make a huge splash in the competitive metagame. It's kind of as a middle-of-the-road army, which I think everyone's uh, generally happy with. It's very good in some matchups, and in some matchups it uh, has it really, really struggles, and uh, that's, that's probably fine. I don't think we need to see too many changes to the Chaos Knights Codex right now. We also, I think more interestingly, have no changes to the Chaos Demons whatsoever, uh, which is a little bit surprising. Chaos Demons are certainly one of the most underpowered factions in the game and have been for a really long time. And while they do make up components of more powerful combos with other Chaos sub-factions, with the uh, newfound emphasis on uh, faction abilities that we are, are seeing in the current iterations of Codexes, with the new Chaos Space Marine Codex coming out, I don't think Chaos Demons are going to be doing that well. Now, that said, I do imagine that we have a Chaos Demon Codex coming around the corner very shortly, and I think the fact that none of these points values have been touched is sort of uh, emblematic of that. Basically, th there's no reason to go through and try to do uh, you know, a really in-depth balance analysis of the Chaos Demon's uh, faction if three weeks down the road they're just going to be entirely overhauled anyway. And uh, I wouldn't be too shocked to hear about that. Moving on, because we do see some very transformative changes to Death Guard. First off, we have the Malignant Plague Caster dropping five points. We also see Poxwalkers reduced back down to their old five points per model cost. For some reason, they increased to six uh, last season, and no one really knew why. But fortunately, that brings the potential for large numbers of Poxwalkers back to Death Guard lists without being too exorbitantly expensive. Now, we saw buffs to Blightlord and Deshroud Terminators in the last Data Slate update, and these guys have also been reduced in their points cost on top of that. It definitely feels like the Terminator builds are where uh, the designers are pushing the identity of the Death Guard faction. They want to be slow and super tanky, and those Death Guard certainly embody that style of game plan. So we see De Blightlord Terminators dropping 2 points per model down to 40. Death Shroud Terminators dropping 5 points per model down to 50. Both of these guys retaining, hopefully, uh, through the next data slate update, retaining their objective secured that they got in the last data slate, and uh, hopefully that will do a little bit to uh, assuage the problems that Death Guard are having currently. We also see some changes to some of the uh, heavier vehicles. Fetid Bloat Drones and Mephitic Blight Hotlers both dropping in points cost. Bloat Drones dropping 15 from 130 down to 115. Uh, Blight Haulers dropping from 130 down to 120, going uh, down 10 points. That's a big deal, especially for the Bloat Drones, because they offer basically the only option for mobility that Death Guard have in their faction. And so uh, being able to fit a couple more of those guys in your list is a pretty big deal. I think a lot of Death Guard lists would love to just start with three of them and uh, be able to, to build out from there. Now, we do also see some changes to the classic Chaos uh, vehicles, and these, it looks like, are changing across the entire breadth of the Chaos Super Faction. This is probably to change in line with the new Chaos Space Marine Codex, which is going to feature uh, some updated profiles for these units, as well as reduced points values. We talked about that Toughness 9 we saw on the Chaos Land Raider, and it'll be interesting to see whether or not the Death Guard and Thousand Suns Land Raiders are changed accordingly. So we see the standard Chaos Land Raider dropping 20 points from 265 down to 245, as well as the Predator Annihilator dropping 15 points from 130 to 115, Predator Destructor dropping 10 from 140 down to 130. I'd like to see the Destructor specifically get another Pip of AP on its on its uh, auto cannon. The interesting thing about uh, Armager Halverin auto cannons is that they uh, got an extra point of AP in the updated Imperial Knights Codex. And that actually made them much more effective. And the Destructor has the exact same autocannon on, uh, on top of its chassis there. So I would like to see that changed as well. We also saw some changes to the Plague Burst Crawler. Plague Burst Crawler is dropping 15 points from 150 down to 135. This is the second round of changes we've seen to the Plague Burst Crawler. Uh, although the last points break that they've seen was a little bit of a mixed blessing and a curse because it dropped them below the threshold by which they could be reliable to the last targets. However, without the existence of to the last in the current GT format, that's less of a consideration. Still, these guys are mainstays of the Death Guard army and dropping them a couple of points certainly helps quite a bit. We also, last but certainly not least, see Mortarian dropping 40 points from 490 which is a pretty meme number because it was a multiple of seven, I guess, down to 450. Uh, much more palatable points value for that guy. We need, to, we need to drop him 30 more points. Let's get him down to, to 420. 
Next up, Thousand Suns. Thousand Suns have almost been entirely unchanged. We do see changes to the Hellbrute, which I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but also changed in Death Guard, dropping 10 points from 115 down to 105. Same thing happens for Thousand Suns. We also see the changes to their standard vehicles, the uh, Predator, Annihilator, and Destructor, both dropping 15 points for the Annihilator and 10 points for the Destructor, uh, just like in Death Guard, and the Chaos Land Raider dropping 20 points as well. Otherwise, Thousand Suns are entirely unchanged, and I think that speaks to the fact that they're probably in a pretty good place from the perspective of the design team. Thousand Suns uh, have been putting up some solid results competitively for a little while. They're not dominant by any stretch of the imagination, and they have a tough time getting through the A-tier factions, but they're certainly a tier 2, you know, tier 1.5 almost faction uh, that's able to contend with almost everything else in the game and maybe just needs a little bit of a nerf to those top factions to see them do well. And since uh, we do see all of the top factions of the game currently getting a little bit of a points decrease or a points increase for their units, a decrease in the number of models they can take, uh, hopefully Thousand Suns will be able to do well without too many buffs uh, going on into the, into the remainder of the season. Anyway, that's it for this one. A bit of a short one. I was a little worried that Chaos would take a really long time because it is a ton of profiles. But with the fact that Chaos Space Marines got these huge changes, uh, although none of them really matter because they are uh, ostensibly for data sheets that do not yet exist, they uh, we can we can save a lot of time there. So that's going to be it for this one. Stay tuned for the next installment where I talk about Imperial sub-factions. And uh, it'll be great. Remember to keep it classy, folks. And have happy wargaming.